Praise the Lord, church. I got a couple. Praise the Lord, church. All right. How many of you are thankful to be in the house of the Lord today? Why don't we clap our hands and let God know that we are so thankful to be in his house today. All the places that I could be, I'm thankful to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. To praise his name, to worship him. He's such a great God and a mighty king. Amen. 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 And I just want to get the most of my experience that I can today. I don't want to leave here with what I came with. If I came with stress or fear, anxiety or worry, I don't want to leave with that today. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open our hearts and minds to let God do what He wants to do. Not what I want Him to do, but what He wants to do. Why don't we pray for His perfect will today in our lives. Lord, I love you. I worship you. I'm so thankful for you, God. Thankful for an opportunity to be in your house today, God. An opportunity to have breath in this body, God. To to be in your house, Lord. To feel your presence, God. Lord, I pray that you help me to push all distractions aside. To praise you. To worship you, God. With everything that I have. Because you are God and you are worthy, God. I pray that you have your will today. Let your kingdom come and will be done in my life today. I pray and we ask it in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Why don't we clap our hands right now? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to encourage somebody today. We're about to start our praise and worship. And you may be thinking, well, who gets to praise and worship? Do I have to have a certain tie color on or shirt color on or have I had have I had had a good day or a reason to celebrate the word of God says this let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord now I want you to look at your neighbor and I look at your other neighbor if you are standing here today then you have breath in your lungs and life in your body and that is the mandate for scripture and the opportunity to praise the Lord so if you have breath in your lungs I want you to raise your hands and to begin praising the Lord thank you Jesus for being such a great God hallelujah
Hallelujah. He has come. He is here. So why don't we move today? Let's magnify the Lord together. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we've gathered here today, not as a group of professional churchgoers, but as a group of consecrated worshipers today in the presence of God Almighty. I'm so glad that you are here this morning. I'm so thankful for the power and the presence of God that is already moving and operating in this room right now. He has us here today. He strategically has drawn us into this house with His presence this morning for a purpose. Amen. And I want to receive from the Lord. Amen. Everything that He has for us today. Welcome to Cross Point Church. I am so glad that every one of you are here this morning worshiping with us. Amen. What an honor it is. And to all of our guests that are with us, it's a privilege to be here today with you. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. We're going to pray this morning over our service. We're going to ask the Lord to minister. Undoubtedly, in a, in a crowd this size, there are a lot of needs, a lot of varied needs, a lot of very complicated yet specific situations. And we need the Lord to help every single one of us this morning. And nothing's too hard for Him. Nothing is too complicated for Him. Amen. And uh, so I don't want you to think that your situation is too messed up for Him to heal you today or Him to deliver you today. That is not the case at all. Amen. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think, the Scripture tells us. Amen. So with that kind of faith today, why don't you pray? Why don't you just ask the Lord to to move in your life today? Would you do that, Lord? We are here gathered in faith today, knowing, Lord, that where we gather and and, and where, where we invest our faith and our worship, God, you respond. You are present. You are active. Today is a day of miracles. Today is the day the Lord has made. Today is a day of healing, a day of salvation, a day of deliverance, a day of answers, a day of clarity. I speak all that in this service today, Jesus. Lord, it's not by our might or our power, but by your spirit that is so powerfully already operating in this room. I pray that you would bless every person, that you would heal everybody today, God, that is hurting I pray, dear Lord, if there's an empty vessel in this room, an empty heart in this place, God, that you would feel, refill, renew, God, in this place, God, a great outpouring of your Spirit, Lord. Deliverances today. Miracles and signs and wonders are going to follow them that believe, Lord. And we believe today that you're a healing and a saving God. Bless every life. Move in every, everybody's situation today. Our focus is not on us or our problems. Our focus is on praising you this morning. If I'll stand still, if I'll hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, I'm going to find my victory today. That's my commitment today in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Put your hands together and give the Lord a worthy ovation of praise. Hallelujah. He's good. He's faithful. And I'm thankful. How about you? Praise God. Be seated for one moment. Ushers, come. We're going to worship in this beautiful, powerful vein of worship right now in our giving of our tithing and our offering. God is so good to us. He is so faithful to every single one of us. Amen. And so today we pray. We pray this prayer that we have found definitely is true to open the heavens amen and it's based in scripture and it's based on the authority of his word so let's pray it together as we give all right upon the authority and by the orders of your word i have given and it shall be given to me pressed down shaken together and running over i am a tither and giver i bring my tithe and offerings today into your storehouse Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts dismissed, royalties received. My greatest desire 
is that my whole family will be saved and walking with God in perfect health and abundance and to walk in divine favor and blessing. I shall be blessed going in. I shall be blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. And it is so. Somebody worship Him today. He's a faithful God. Give as unto the Lord the first fruit, our tithing, our offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you are uh, prone to, we, you have the opportunity to give uh, electronically through our Easy Tithe app. Go search out Easy Tithe wherever you get your apps and you can find us, Cross Point Church of Bowling Green. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Come back Wednesday night, 6.30, Christian Education, classes for all ages. And then back here Sunday morning, 10 a.m. for worship. I am ready to worship the Lord today. Amen. I know God has something in store for us that's going to absolutely... Uh, Blow hell away today. Blow Satan's attack out of the water today. Somebody say amen. Let's stand together right now. I'm ready to worship the Lord. Sister Gron and this praise team is going to lead us. And we are going to follow. Amen. And we are going to walk into the presence of the Lord. I wonder if you could close your eyes. Lift your hands right now. And just begin to, just with your voice, magnify the Lord. Give Him great praise. Amen. Aren't you thankful for freedom in the house of the Lord today? That we can lift up our hands, we can lift up our voices and speak to Him. to the wild and don't be afraid we will run into wide open spaces grace is waiting for you now dance like the weight has been lifted grace is waiting for you when the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Come on, is anybody thankful for freedom in this place this morning? Spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the way has been lifted. Grace is waiting where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom, there is freedom where the spirit of the Lord is. today you can lift it up to the Lord and he can break chains and set you free there's nothing too big for him or too small so in this moment why don't you lift your voice and sing with chains will fall risen shake at the sound of Jesus name lives made whole hearts awake at the sound of Jesus name Whoa. Chains will fall risen shake at the sound of 
He can move mountains. He can break strongholds. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
presence is moving so mightily right now, and I believe it's because we, we know what this song is describing. We can look at where our lives should be right now, but God stepped in. If I could tell some of the testimonies of the men and women in this place that used to be hell's trophies, but now they're heaven's testimonies of what the power of God can do, you would be amazed. But I'm thankful that that same power and authority is here today and available to us. And He can take brokenness and turn it to beauty. He can take what's wrong and make it right. Today, He can still move. If you believe that, just raise your hands right now. Oh, somebody's going through something and you need to know that God can move and He will move. That God still loves you. He's still powerful. He still has authority. No matter what the situation says, no matter what the doctor says or the bank account looks like, God is still on the throne with power. God, do the impossible. Move the unmovable today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's where our confidence is, church. Not in our abilities, but His. Not in my ability to change things. Not in my oratory. Nothing I do will change anyone's situation. Nothing you do will change anybody's real situations, but you invoke the name of Jesus into that situation, and everything begins to change. We're going to take time, and we're going to pray. And if you have a need, we're going to pray for you today. But before we pray for you, there are some needs. There, there's a list of needs on the screen. If they'll, if they'll put that, those are our, our friends, family members, brothers and sisters that just need a touch of God, that they just need God to move. And that, that list is going to be up there, but we also have some needs that that we need to pray specifically for. We need to pray for Louisiana and the Gulf Coast right now. There is a, I believe it is Hurricane Ida that is scheduled to make landfall today, I believe, and it is supposed to be a Category 4. And we just need to pray God's protection over those people, amen. And God's able to protect, amen. We're going to pray that God touches the people over there. We're going to pray for the situation in Afghanistan right now. So tragic and so... Uh, It's so heartbreaking, the videos and the pictures that we're seeing. It makes me just want heaven even more, amen. To see the brokenness, I just want God to move, amen. A little bit of a testimony, and I haven't, I've only read a little bit into it, but we know that there are churches over there. We do have missionaries over there. And Sister Miller, I, I read a report that there were 300 people in this underground church, but there are reports now that it has inflated to about 2,500 people in the church right now. In the midst of tyranny, God still will have a church, and He still will move, and He still will have a revival. Amen? Amen. Let's remember the families of our 13 fallen soldiers. That tragedy, you've seen their faces on social media, and we need to pray for their families, that God just gives peace like never before. They were brothers, they were sisters, they were sons and daughters, and And we need God to touch those families right now. Whatever God is touching on your heart, whatever need that I've mentioned, we're going to pick one and we're going to plead the blood of Calvary over it. We're going to pray in Jesus' name that He moves. Lord, I love you and I worship you. God, I'm so thankful for the ability to bring our needs and petitions before you. God, to bring these impossible situations to you, knowing that you are able to move. God, that you moved in the past and that you still will move now. God, we lift up the people on the Louisiana coast and the Gulf Coast. God, God, I pray that you touch them, Lord, that your hand of protection is there as the storm prepares to make landfall. God, I pray that you protect. God, that you make a way, that you touch leaders as they make decisions. God, God, we put it in your hands, God, and believe that you can and will move. God, we pray that you move in the situation in Afghanistan. God, the soldiers, the civilians, God, I pray that you begin to move and do a work, God. There is no power greater than you. There is no authority, God, mightier than you. And we pray that you begin to move. God, we pray that you touch the families of those fallen soldiers, Lord. God, that your your peace, God, that passes all understanding, that it begin to wrap them, I pray. God, that your love, God, that your kindness, that your goodness just overwhelm those families, Lord. God, we pray that you touch all these needs, God, knowing that you are able, God, knowing that you have all power. God, we place our trust and our hope in you, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God says that we are saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Now, people will say that the testimony is talking about Scripture, but some will also say that it is the testimony of the saints. To say that God did this for me. Look what God did for me. Look at the cancer that he healed. Look at the marriage that he put back together. And that we can draw confidence from that. That that can build faith. And I just wonder if there's anybody here that you can say God moved on my life. 
that I, I had a situation that it didn't make sense. I didn't see a solution, but I'm standing here today, and I have a testimony. If that, if that applies to you, I just want you to raise your hand. Amen. Oh, look at all the hands raised. That proves that my God is good and that my God is powerful. And Scripture tells us that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That power that moved in your situation is available today. That power that resurrected people in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, is available here today. If you have a need, I just want you to raise your hand. Look at all these needs. It's okay. It's okay to admit you have a need, you have a situation. We all go through things. We all have needs, and we all serve that same God. If you see a hand raised next to you, I just want you to begin to pray for them. I want you to plead the blood of Christ over them. I want you to pray in Jesus' name. And I want you to pray with boldness. If you know what God has done for you, I want you to pray faith believing that God can move and that He will move. If you want prayer from our prayer team, I encourage you to come to the front and we'll lay hands on you and we'll pray in the name of Jesus. As the praise team begins to say, why don't we just pray for one another? Why don't we just let God move? And why, why don't we just pray in the name of Jesus today? changing lives in this place here this morning. How beautiful it is. qualified people, I, would, I wouldn't be here this morning. Amen. But this house, it's already been alluded to by Brother Craner. This house is full of men and women that used to be alcoholics, used to be in prison cells, used to have really, really messed up lives. Amen. But the 
behold, didn't need a physician. So he came to seek and to save the lost. And I'm so thankful for that today. Amen. And he's here for you. He's here for me today. Before I read this text, stay standing. Didn't this praise and worship team just powerfully and with an anointing on them today? And I, I want to say thank you to Brother Cameron Williams. Where did he go? There he is. Wow, man, we're so glad you're with us today. Put your hands together. Welcome, Brother Williams. He is from Illinois. Amen. Just graduated Indiana Bible College. He grew up in the same church as Brother Grana. So lots of connections there. And we're so thrilled he's with us this week and lent that anointed voice and his worship to this praise team today. We're so thankful. And it's so good to see Sister Wanda Linscombe here this morning. I want you to know how much we love you. Amen. And Sister Hoffman and even Brother Weston, College Boys Home this weekend. Amen. We love you all. Yesterday was a great day celebrating the life of an incredible man. So we laid Brother Gary to, to the final resting spot here in this life with an incredible, incredible promise that we see and be reunited again with him very soon. Amen. Sister, we love you. This church loves you. I know you're new to us and new to Kentucky, but we are here to help and serve you. If there's a shingle that comes off your roof, call me. I can't do anything about it, but I know some guys in this church that can fix it for you. Amen. Any problem, any situation, we are the body of Christ here to lift one another up. Amen. And to all of our other guests that are here today, welcome. Thank you privilege it is to see every one of you. Mark chapter 3 beginning at verse number 1. Mark chapter 3 and verse number 1. And he entered again into the synagogue and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. <clears throat> And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, stand forth. And he said unto him, is it lawful to, unto them, excuse me, he said, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil? To save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. This morning, for just a little bit, I want to preach to you something that God gave me. I want to preach to you compensating, coping, or complete. We, we get to choose compensating, coping, or complete. You may be seated. During his earthly ministry, Jesus was constantly followed by the Pharisee paparazzi. And in this instant incident, they, they watched him very closely. Whether he would heal the man on a day that they didn't agree with, on the Sabbath day. The critics of Jesus expected him to heal this man. Isn't that something? <laughs> They're, by their expectation, they admitted that Jesus housed the power of God to work miracles. They knew he could do it. Knowing this, they watched him closely so they might accuse him, the scripture says. They knew Jesus, they knew what Jesus could do, but their knowledge never drew them close to him in relationship, just close to him in criticism of him. It was as if a man could fly. But the authorities wanted to know if he had a pilot's license. That's kind of, kind of the way they were. They wanted to put their validation on this, their approval on it. The Pharisees had become professionals at regulating good things, setting social limitations and societal limitations on where it could happen, when it could take place, and what the source of the good thing could be. According to their Sabbath traditions, if you cut your finger... You could stop the bleeding, but you couldn't put any ointment on it. You could stop it from getting worse, but you weren't allowed to make it any better. You'd have to wait until they said so. 
until they said it was okay for you to experience healing. They had successfully set societal and cultural boundaries and limitations. You can stop the bleeding, but you can't apply the ointment. You'll, you'll just have to cope with your problem. Maybe overcompensate in some area to get through. But sorry, you can't become completely whole again without us. This man's life was, was one that undoubtedly had kind of sort of lived like that. He had learned how to cope and he had learned how to compensate. But Jesus Christ was on the scene to make him complete. Can somebody say amen? That philosophy was reinforced to me this week as I read a New York Post article from Thursday. Headline, Harvard's new chaplain is an atheist and good without God. The spiritual leader doesn't need a higher power. As a sidebar, Harvard was one of the many colleges that did not accept me. But I didn't apply. So anyway... Fun fact, Harvard University's organization of chaplains is getting a new president to uh, coordinate the, the campus Christian, Jewish, Hindu, Buddhist, and assorted other religious communities. Only now, president, only the new president, 44-year-old Greg Epstein, does not identify with any of those traditional religious groups himself. He's an atheist. Despite his disbelief in a higher power, Harvard chaplains felt Epstein who's the author of the book, Good Without God, what a billion non-religious people do believe. They felt Epstein was a good choice for the position due to young people's increasing lack of religiosity. There's a rising group of people who no longer identify with any religious tradition but still experience a real need for conversation and support around what it means to be a good human and live an ethical life. Epstein, who grew up in a Jewish home, told the New York Times in an in interview published Thursday, we don't look to God for answers, he added. We are each other's answers. What a statement. We don't look to God for answers. We are each other's answers. This humanistic philosophy, brothers and sisters, has gripped our generation. Choosing therapy over theology. Human collaboration over consecrated faith in a holy God. It's humanism. Peddling to all the people that will listen to that lie. A lie that says, cope with your problem. Cope with your surroundings and your situation. We have a system that can help you have the capacity to successfully deal with it. And we can help you to compensate to counteract any of those unpleasant or unwelcome problems that come into your life by exerting opposite extra force to affect it. I am very thankful today for any advantage and advancement that God has given to and through human hands. I am very thankful today for every possible program that works and helps. But I have come with boldness to this pulpit this morning to declare that a humanistic system of coping and compensating the physical and the emotional man will always have limited success and it will only be for a season. It can have that success, but without God, His grace, His mercy, His supernatural power the spiritual man will never be complete. Never be healed. Never be whole. Because only Jesus can satisfy a human being's soul. Can somebody say amen? amen. Jeremiah 10 tells us, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man. I'll say that again. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. I'm here to tell you 
that we cannot be each other's answers because we don't have that capacity to be each other's answers. We need each other. No man is an island. Fellowship is a crucial, integral part of kingdom life in the, in the kingdom of God. But hear me well this morning. I'm not your answer and you're not my answer. Proverbs said, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Every humanistic philosophy will lead us down a path of eventual destruction. Either in this life or perhaps it will take eternity to to even the books. But I promise you this morning, trying to do it without God will always end up in destruction and death. Can somebody say amen? Amen. In our text, Jesus, verse 5 says, He looked around about them with anger. Everybody say anger. Look at your neighbor and see if you see any anger in them right now. Just, just hold on to that. We'll deal with it later. But, but, but Jesus was angry. He was grieved, the Scripture says, for the hardness of their hearts. He saith unto the man, stretch forth his hand. So, so this is one of the few places where Jesus is described as having anger. And he was angry at the hardness of men's hearts. He was angry because this was a perfect opportunity for the critics of his to change their minds about him. To change their minds about their human philosophy. But they refused to change their minds. And instead they rejected Jesus again. And they criticized him again. And they attacked him again. They made an alliance with the Herodians. People that weren't religious, they, they, they were just anti-everything. They, they were the enemies of, 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 the, of the Pharisees. But they, they, they made this uh, uh, cooperative effort to come together and to destroy Jesus Christ. In this way, we here, brothers and sisters, we see that Jesus deliberately used this occasion to provoke a, sp- a response. Because he had the man stand up and he stopped what he was doing and he looked around and he addressed the the critics. And he said, tell me, is it okay to do this or not to do this? Is it okay to do good or to do evil? To to save a life or to kill a life? Y'all tell me. And they would not respond. They would not say a word. I I really love this about how Jesus handled it. When they didn't respond, they didn't repent. It, It made him mad. He was angry. And so he looks at this man. Amen. And he could have done this the next day. He could have done it privately. He could have done like he did with others and go to their house and heal them. He could have done any of that. But instead he chose to do it right there in that moment and in that place in the face of those critics somebody say amen listen I'm not coming to this pulpit to tell you we've got to be mean and obnoxious we cannot be we have to speak the truth in love but I have also come to proclaim that it is time for the believers for the church for the disciples of Jesus Christ to rise up in this hour and reject a humanistic philosophy and to let the world know that only Jesus can satisfy a person's soul We're not going to do it in a corner. We're not going to do it in quiet. We are going to shout it from the rooftops. We need a move. We need a move. We need a move of His Spirit. I wish you'd put your hands together and give the Lord great praise. You may be seated. The man's hand was withered. It was gnarled it was not able to be used for what his other hand could do for what the hands of others were able to do to grip things to manipulate things to work with things he had that weathered hand but apparently his feet were okay because his feet took him to church somebody say amen His feet took him to a public place of worship. Just because he had a withered hand, he didn't stay home. Just because he had a withered hand didn't mean he he, he was going to stop worshiping. 
Brothers and sisters, we should never allow a single issue to cause us to shut down our worship. Can somebody say amen? We cannot allow an isolated problem to keep us out of the place where God can heal us and God can help us. Amen. And something may be going wrong in your life, but please don't let it shut down your worship. Something may not be happening like you want it to happen right now and you don't have a grip on things like you wished you could, but you keep on shouting. You keep on worshiping. You keep on dancing. You keep on singing hallelujah. I wish I could get a little help in this room here this morning hallelujah things around me aren't great but God is great oh my body is broken and hurting today but I'm in the presence of the healer so I'm going to sing and shout about it I'm in the middle of a pandemic and my world is upside down but I have the hand of Jesus and I am not going to let go that must be our mantra may be seated most of us would not blame the man if he said make me whole then I'll respond I'm not sure that's not what I would have said Jesus as quick as you make this hand right I'll do I'll stretch it forth that's what I'll do but the man didn't have a fix me first approach to the call of God rather he demonstrated faith over fear in his response to the Lord. The Lord did not say, present me your hand. He did not say, show me your hand. He said, stretch forth your hand. Do something in faith that physically you know you're not able to do and accomplish on your own. Somebody say, amen. Do something that you've not been able to do in a long time. You've not been able to grip anything. You've not been able to maneuver. You haven't had dexterity. You haven't, and you can't see yourself doing that anymore. You've learned to live with it. You've learned to cope with it. You've overcompensated. The philosophy of this world and this pharisaical group that is around us today has taught you that you can only get as good as they say you can, and you can only live a limited capacity that they dictate to you that you can live. They don't want me to heal you today. They don't want you to be delivered today they don't want you to get your grip back they don't want you to get your dexterity back today but I'm telling you son if you have a little faith today don't just show me your problem give me your problem don't just use that as an excuse come on now stretch forth your hand Maybe you hadn't felt like crying in a while. Maybe you've lost your song. Maybe you haven't worshipped God like you want to in a long time. I believe today would be a good day to do something in faith that our physical person says, I can't do that. I believe it's a great day for somebody to worship him. My body might be in pain, but I've got breath in my lungs, so I'm going to praise him. My feet may be feeble, but I'll clap my hands. My hands may have arthritis in them, but I've got to shout. I'm not shutting down because I've got a single problem today. I'm giving him all that I've got. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, stand with me if you're not standing. Pharisees had drifted from being a religious, spiritual people to being humanist. 
and saying we regulate healing we regulate wholeness you can stop the bleeding but you can't have the ointment we don't want you to keep bleeding but I'm sorry you cannot feel healing ointment run over your life so cope with it overcompensate for it just learn to live with it learn to live with pain that could be healed learn to live with a problem that God could take care of or maybe you just need to overcompensate that hole inside your heart you fill it up with all kinds of stuff you go ahead and just overcompensate. You just go ahead and, and, and try to overcompensate with an addiction. Overcompensate uh, uh, with uh, social things. Overcompensate with material things. Go ahead and do that. Cope with it. Compensate for it. But, but you can't be whole. But Jesus shut down the voice of the critic. Turned to the man and said, I'm going to help you do something you don't think you can do. Paul was addressing heresy in Colossians 2 and he said this Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men for the rudiments after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily when you say Jesus you are speaking every virtue of God Almighty into existence. He is the Father. He is the Son. He is the Spirit. In Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And that's important for us here this morning because that makes completeness. Amen. If he wasn't, if he was just partially God, he wasn't God at all. But he was all together God in an altogether sacrificial vessel. And he conquered death and hell and the grave. And he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And so when I pray in Jesus' name, all the authority of heaven crushes down on my problem. And ye are complete in Him. I've come to reach for somebody today who's just tried to cope and tried to compensate. I've come to tell you the Lord has more available for you than any possible human solution. He will bring resolution. He will bring healing. He will bring restoration. He's here today for that. You can be complete in Him. You have felt a void. You have felt an emptiness. You've experienced a dry season where nothing seemed to be there. But the Lord has brought you to this place to hear this red-headed preacher today to tell you, I don't want you compensating anymore. I don't want you coping anymore. I want to make you complete today. I want to be the God that you need me to be, the healer, the Savior that you need to be here this morning oh why don't you come to an altar why don't you come we need a move of God today oh my withered hand is not getting healed by the system of the Pharisees all they tell me is to compensate they tell me to cope with it but I I've got a little bit of the word of God for you today you can be complete going to overcompensate with a, with a career, with an education, with an addiction, with a relationship. I can't fill that void with anything except the Spirit of God. Says compensate with compromise. But I've come to tell you.
compensate with material things. But I promise you, He will never satisfy your soul.
doubt that God has done something. And there'd be no doubt that his presence has moved and touched our lives. And I think that's one of them. And I'm so thankful for that. I don't, I don't know what you were going through, but in the name of Jesus, I believe he touched it. I believe he's changing some things. I believe he's opening doors. I believe he's closing the wrong ones too. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful. Thank you, Pastor, for that challenging message to, to be complete. To be complete. And the reality is, is completeness is available to us if we would but choose it. Father, the Father is always willing. Let's pray and that God will help us to take this and to apply it to our lives. Lord, I love you. I worship you. I'm thankful for your presence. Thankful for your spirit, God, that I felt. God, I pray that I choose to be complete in you every single time, God. To do whatever it takes to make any sacrifice I can to get my problem to you and to your presence, God. And allow your presence and your spirit to move. I pray you touch us, God, as we go throughout this week at our places of work, our schools, God, to be lights that shine for you, to represent you, I pray. Keep us safe, we ask it in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be dismissed.